In this video, we're going to learn a bit more about determinants and the invertible matrix theorem, which will lead us to the characteristic equation. We're actually just going to jump right into an example. Um, instead of talking about what we're going to do and then doing it, let's just do it. So this example asks us to find the eigenvalues for matrix A. And again, we're using the fact that we're looking for eigenvalues, which is lambda, and we're using the fact that a minus lambda i x should be equal to zero, and that's where we're going to find those eigenvalues. Now we've done this before, but we did it in a little bit different way, so I'm going to show you another way to do it using the invertible matrix theorem. So if you'll recall, what I'm looking for is lambda, where this equation is equal to zero, which means I'm looking for the non-trivial solution, and by the invertible matrix theorem, it's essentially equivalent to us finding all of the lambdas so that this resulting matrix is not invertible. So let's take a look at actually doing some of this, and I'll explain as we go. I'm finding A minus lambda I, so I'm taking 2, negative 1, 1, 4, I'm subtracting lambda i, which is just lambda 0, 0, lambda. So my resulting matrix is 2 minus lambda, 1, negative 1, 4 minus lambda. What I want is, again, looking for the non-trivial solutions, I'm trying to find where this matrix is not invertible. And when that matrix is not invertible by the invertible matrix theorem, one of the ways we know that is when the determinant is equal to zero, then it's not invertible. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I want zero to be the determinant of A minus lambda I, which means I need to find the determinant of, oops, that's not an X. <laughs> My lambdas are looking like X's, which is a problem. It still does, let's try one more time. Lambda, 1, negative 1, 4, minus lambda. I'm looking for this determinant. This is a 2 by 2 matrix, so hopefully we recall that this one's pretty easy to determine. This would be uh, 2 minus lambda times 4 minus lambda and subtract negative 1 times 1. And again, I'm wanting this to be equal to 0. So let's do a little bit of math. I would get 8 minus 6 lambda plus lambda squared, and then minus negative 1 or plus 1, which gives me, if I do some rearranging, lambda squared minus 6 lambda plus 9. I do some factoring, so good old algebra 1 or algebra 2. Back here, I have lambda minus 3 quantity squared. And again, this is equal to 0. So this is truly just like an Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 question where we are factoring, setting it equal to zero. So essentially, I'm going to set each factor equal to zero. Now in this case, I have the same factor twice. So I'm going to say lambda minus three is equal to zero. So lambda is equal to three. So what have I done? They have said find the eigenvalues or find lambda. And here I have found lambda to be three and that is my solution, that is my eigenvalue. And because it happened twice, we just say that it has a multiplicity of three. Let's talk a little bit more about determinants. And I'm gonna warn you ahead of time, nothing on this page is new. We have talked about all of this before. So if you'll go back to when we talked about determinants before and different ways to, to find the determinant. One of the ways that we talked about was through row operations. So hopefully, as we go through the first part of this, it should all be things that you remember from the last chapter. So the first part says, let A be an n by n, so it's a square matrix, and A can row reduce to U, where U is an echelon form obtained by row replacements and R interchanges, no scaling. So before we continue, if you'll recall, when we did a row replacement in finding the determinant, we didn't do anything different to the determinant. We didn't have to multiply it by anything. We didn't have to take it times a negative. When we did an interchange, when we swapped two rows, we had to take it times negative one. 
So keep that in mind as we're talking about R interchanges and no scaling. Now, why does it say no scaling? Well, if you'll recall, if I scaled a row by one fifth, then I had to multiply the whole thing by five. So taking the scaling out of it means that it's much easier for us to make a definition. So then it says the determinant of A is equal to negative one to the R. Okay, that makes sense because there's just R interchanges and we have to take negative one that many times. Uh, times the product of the diagonal entries. Well, that makes sense too because once we had it in the echelon form, all we did was find the diagonal, the product of the diagonals, and that was our determinant. That's all this is saying. It's, it's simplifying for you or summarizing for you something you already knew. In addition, it's saying if A is invertible, then those are all pivots, which we knew. But if it's not invertible, there's at least one zero entry which is fine because that is now telling us that to find the determinant, we're still going to get this into echelon form, but the determinant will either be zero if A is not invertible or negative one times the product of the pivots in U, which is the product of the diagonals when A is invertible. So really it's just a great summary of something we already knew. We're going to do this practice question together. So if you'll recall, we're looking for the determinant of A, and we're just going to do this with row operations so that hopefully this is something you remember how to do from last chapter. We're going to compute the determinant of A and we're going to do some row operations. And recall, we're not looking for reduced row echelon form, so we're not doing any scaling. We're just going to do row replacement or row interchange. So in doing that, I'm going to keep my first row, 513, just as it is. And I'm going to keep 0, 2, 2 as it is because my goal here is to get a 0. So I'm going to add rows 1 and 3. That's going to give me 0, 1, 0. So what I'm going to do now is this guy is perfect for row 2. I'm going to do a swap. So I'm going to put a star here to remind us that we did a swap. And my new um, matrix would be 513. 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 2. And again, maybe we put the star in the middle to remind us that's what we did, was we did a swap. And again, I'm keeping track of swaps because my definition said I'm taking negative 1 to the R, where R is the number of swaps. So continuing to echelon form, I would take my first row and keep it the same. And I would take my second row and keep it the same. And my third row, I would take negative 2 times row 2 and add it to row 3. So that's 0, 0, 2. So my definition just told me that in order to find the determinant of A, I'm going to take negative 1 to the R. And R is the number of swaps I did, which was just 1. And then I'm going to multiply that by the product of the diagonals. So 5, 1. Oops, 5, 1, close the parenthesis, and 2. So negative 1 times 5 times 1 times 2 is negative 10. Also keep in mind that you don't have to do row operations. We can do cofactor expansion. I'm not going to go through this example using cofactor expansion, but remember there's no restriction to how to find the determinant. So all the way that we learn, all the ways that we learn to find the determinant in our previous lessons, we can still use those here. If however you choose to use row operations, just keep in mind that negative one to the R times the diagonal and that you're not looking for RRE but just echelon form. We'll finish this video by adding two more items to our invertible matrix theorem. And again, just things that we've already talked about. So we can also say that if A is an n by n matrix, then A is invertible if and only if the number zero is not an eigenvalue of A and if the determinant of A is not equal to zero. So those can now be added to our invertible matrix theorem. Uh, stay tuned. Our next lesson is going to talk about the char characteristic equation.